The nice folks over at Banggood, or perhaps more accurately, someone selling products through that website, recently sent me something to review. They'd probably like it if I'd go ahead and hold up my end of the bargain and actually create the review that I told them I would. And so it is that you have stumbled into yet another UXW Bill product review. Now before we get started, I want to apologize for all of the noises that you hear in the great outdoors, the lawnmowers, birds, weed whackers, people having a good time, all that sort of thing. It was just too nice of a day to stay inside, especially when I'm told that tomorrow we're going to have rain. All of that, however, is immaterial to the product review. I just hope you'll employ a little bit of patience with the video's soundtrack as necessary. Now, I mean no disrespect to the nice people at Banggood, but the truth of the matter is we're all thinking it. That name just never, ever stops being funny. So what did they send me to review? Well, let's take a look at it. This is a two-in-one device. It is a conventional tape measure with a five meter long tape in it combined with a laser rangefinder that boasts of a 30 meter maximum measuring distance. It also came with a nice little instruction manual that's actually fairly comprehensible. But the question, of course, is does this thing actually work? And right away I'm going to tell you about what I see as a spectacular blunder, being as I live in a part of the world where imperial or English measurements rather than metric are still the standard. Now you can agree or disagree with that all you want. Let's not have that debate here. For information's sake, if you're looking at buying this thing in a country that measures with the imperial or English measurements, you may want to look past this product. I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt here. Maybe they sent me this model by mistake and a version with both units of measurement or the other unit of measurement, the imperial and English measurements, actually exists. But the one that I got, at least as far as the measuring tape is concerned, is completely metric. It's delineated in centimeters. And being as I don't measure, whether I should or not, again, in those particular units, that limits its usefulness for me. Fortunately, the laser rangefinder portion of this measure is not afflicted by that problem. We still have to answer the question, though. Is it actually accurate, and how well does it work under varying conditions? That's another reason why I'm out here shooting the video in the great outdoors today. I've momentarily returned to the great indoors not only to make a few measurement tests under more controlled conditions, but also to go over the basic functions and operations of the laser rangefinder portion of this tape measure. Everything is done through one large round button, and while that certainly makes operation quite easy, Getting through the setup menus and all the other modes of operation is a little bit convoluted. However, it's not so much that using the rangefinder is going to prove to be an exercise in complete and utter frustration. The button is large, and I suspect that turning it on accidentally, if you have it in your pocket, is likely to be a problem. There's also not a clip on this to hold it on your belt or anything like that, which may further limit its utility a little bit for some of you. But in order to turn it on, you hold the button down for several seconds, and the display lights up. There is no self-test that appears illuminating all the segments in the display, but if we were to take a quick gander at the operating instructions, they do call out all of the segments there. And most of them are what you would expect, except for segment number three, which is indicated as being for Bluetooth purposes. However, if there is any Bluetooth functionality resident in this particular variant of the tape measure, I have not been able to find it, and there's no mention of a corresponding application that would go with it. With the rangefinder function turned on, making a measurement is very easy and quite straightforward. You simply point the tape measure's front at whatever you would like to measure, and you push the button once to activate the laser which, when it blinds your camcorder, produces some very interesting patterns on the image sensor. Once the laser beam is pointing at the distant object you want to measure, you simply push the button again, and moments later, what it believes to be the correct distance is indicated on the built-in display. Of course, if you're going to make measurements, you probably want them to be in a unit that you find suitable. In order to adjust those and other settings, the unit needs to be turned off, You'll start by holding down the button for about five seconds. 
and moments later the rangefinder will beep to indicate that you have entered the setup menu. We'll see if we can get this to focus a little bit better. There we go. There is a calibration setting that allows you to determine just how much compensation you need for a given measurement. You can make this adjustment and any other in the menu by simply pressing the button which turns the backlight on. I believe you can go about seven inches in either direction plus or minus and of course then you can go back to zero if you've accidentally selected a calibration that you don't want to keep. If you hold down the button again for a period of time you can choose the unit of measurement. Your choices are fractional inches meters, feet, inches and feet. The single quote mark indicates feet, the double quote mark indicates inches, and of course inches in decimal. And then it cycles back around to fractional inches. When you have made all of the setting changes that you wish to, you can simply hold down the button yet again and the unit returns to the measurement mode. When you are in the measurement mode, you can activate a compensation mechanism that I believe takes into account the three inches or so occupied by the body of the tape measure itself. To do this, you simply hold down the button for three seconds. And you can see that a brace has appeared in the display underneath that black dash. That turns on the compensation for the tape measure's own length which is handy if you've got it backed up against a wall or something and you need to ensure that your measurement is going to be accurate in spite of that. Whenever you're making measurements with a laser rangefinder of any kind, you need something for the beam to hit. For example, if I wanted to measure one end of this tabletop to the other, I'd have to establish a backstop of some kind. And that's what I've done here. I've set this Kleenex box at the edge of the table. I've also set up my conventional measuring tape. I pulled out about 16 inches worth of tape, but I positioned the rangefinder right at the 10 inch mark and I turned the compensation functionality off. So now we're going to see just how accurate it is over a short distance. If it's still turned on, if it's not I'll have to turn it back on. We'll push the button once to turn the laser on. You might be able to see the beam where it's hitting the Kleenex box and then I'll push it again to take the measurement and it says 13 inches so it's about three inches out so I don't think you're going to want to use this for terribly precision measurements but that was kind of my suspicion from the get-go let's see how repeatable of a result that happens to be well there it says 13 inches once again let's just move it back to well 13 inches and see what it says at that point. It says 15 and 7 eighths. So the offset does seem pretty stable over a short distance. Let's try some longer distances. In case anyone happens to be wondering, this thing's energy source comes from a rechargeable internal lithium ion battery. And like practically everything else in the world today, it charges by way of a USB port. Unfortunately, that is all it does. There is no memory within to store measurements, nor is there any way to retrieve measurements and upload them into your personal computer. It's just a charging port. For some reasons of foolhardiness and others of genuine curiosity, I went ahead and pulled out the measuring tape in its entirety just to see which the 5 meter and 30 meter specifications applied to. And it turns out that the tape is in fact 5 meters long. I'm also pleased to see as a result of doing so, if I haven't completely diddled the thing, that it looks like you could replace the measurement tape. And this would be good if you happened to break it, or if you simply wanted to switch to a tape, provided you could find one with the appropriate length and other characteristics that was delineated in the measurement units you desired to use. Of course, I certainly hope I haven't broken the thing by pulling it out that far. I guess I'll find out here in a couple of moments when I try to put all that tape back in there again. And I'm back, pleased to report that I did not, in fact, break this measuring tape when I pulled it out to its furthest extreme. Now, in order to measure over a longer distance and find out whether or not this laser rangefinder is good for even a portion of the distance that they claim it is, I've gone ahead and set up a little experiment where I'm going to measure the distance from here to my garage door. 
I've set my platform at right around 25 feet, give or take a little bit, mainly by virtue of the fact that my world's finest Harbor Freight freebie tape measure does not have a tape break that is tremendously effective at the full extent of its travel. So we might be a couple inches here or there. I've gone ahead and set up the rangefinder accordingly to measure in both feet and inches over this longer distance. And I'll just go ahead and turn it on, which I've just done. And then I'll push the button. I don't see a laser dot anywhere on that garage door, so I really don't hold out any hope that this is going to work. But I'll push the button again, and it thinks it got a measurement. Yep, I just screwed it up. Even though I did not see a laser dot, it's pretty well right on the money. 25 feet, 2 inches, and 7 sixteenths of an inch. That's not too shabby a result. And the measurements, although not perfectly so, do appear to be fairly repeatable. After five or six different measurement attempts, it finally settled down on 24 feet, 11 inches, and a quarter. Now it's time for us to put to the test the claimed measuring capability of that laser rangefinder. Now, the people who manufactured it labeled it as being capable of up to 30 meters. That's right around 100 feet or thereabouts. So what I've gone ahead and done here, I've set up several different tomato cages in my yard, delineated at 25 foot intervals, all the way back over there to Ranger Danger. And while I was doing this, I couldn't help but take note of this road destruction sign over here that says the road will be closed in 500 feet. And I believe that my AirSat setup here has made a lie of that, as I really don't think there's 500 feet between the end of the road there and this sign. Speaking of road destruction, I don't actually have a tape measure that will measure to 100 feet. Luckily, I remembered that the construction guys left one hanging on a barricade down there. They're not working today, and I figure that even if they were, they wouldn't miss it for a couple minutes, so I just kind of helped myself to it. And what I'll do, I've made a mark on these exactly where I need to place my workbench. I would not have the audacity to claim that this is terrifyingly precise, but it ought to be good enough for government work. Especially since as often as not, the government doesn't. Oops, there went the apolitical nature of the channel right out the window. But each one of these will serve as a reference point where I will set my workbench with the rangefinder on it. And being it is, as it is a rangefinder, I don't think it should be too much of a stretch to expect that we could find the distance to a Ford Ranger with it. Do you? <laughs> the only potential fly in the ointment here, a laser beam, of course, is a highly collimated, that is to say, very tightly focused beam of light. But like any other beam of light, over a long enough distance, it too will begin to diverge. And I think it was probably doing so in just the 25 feet or so to the garage door. So it'll be interesting to see if it actually manages to stay in the game for all of the nearly 100 feet that they claim it will. Let's get started. The ultimately divergent nature of even a tightly focused laser beam does bring in another possibility for error. It's entirely possible that when I've gotten far enough away from the Ranger that the laser light may no longer be hitting it as my intended target, which might serve to throw the measurements off. Fortunately, where there's a William, there's a way. And although I really don't want to go to this much trouble because it's starting to look an awful lot like work at this point, I could go around behind the new garage and try using my yard house as a frame of reference. But that's also a huge mess, so... <laughs> oh well. You've seen it in the electric lawnmower video. So let's go ahead and get started. This is our 25 foot mark right here. Go ahead and turn the rangefinder on. And we'll just see whether or not we actually get a plausible result. And the answer is we didn't get anything, so we'll try it again here. I may not be able to hand hold this thing. Okay, yeah, it's not coming up with a result, so this does not bode well for this particular experiment. Well, let me go over there and get the platform, I guess. Well, evidently it needs a platform that's far more stable than one just simply hand-holding it, which really isn't the biggest surprise in the world. But so far we're not too terribly far off. 
I'll take that measurement again just to see how consistent it happens to be. We'll see what we got this time. Well, it added a couple inches and a fraction, 5 sixteenths, 5 sixteenths. That's not too terrible, really. Oh, and I do see where the laser beam is hitting the Ranger. I don't know if you can see it as well. It certainly did not appear to show up on the camera's viewfinder. Yep. 25 feet, 11 inches, and 3 quarters of an inch this time. Alright, let's crank it up and go down to 50 feet. And by golly folks, it's still most definitely in the game. Here again, there's a little bit of variance in the measurement, but nothing too serious. Unfortunately, this little laser rangefinder met its match at the 75 feet mark. It was unable, after many dozens of attempts, to produce any measurement except for two occasions, one of which where it got very close at 75 feet 2 inches, the other of which was unfortunately way off at 93 feet and 5 inches. So unfortunately that means that yes, it does not meet the claimed 30 meter specification that's printed on it. Still, it's inexpensive enough that I think it's actually a pretty decent product for the money. And it's also a fascinating demonstration of one of the many possible uses of laser light out there in the world today. Now the seller asked that I include a link to their listing on the Banggood website. You'll find that down in the video description if you're interested in purchasing one of these. And I see no reason why you might not as well get it from them. Their pricing is certainly reasonable compared to everybody else. Other than that though, as always, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. I do hope you enjoyed it. It may not have been the most precise laser rangefinder review out there, but I'm hopeful that it was one of the more entertaining ones that might be on the YouTubes today. In any event, I'm always interested in hearing your constructive commentary down in the video comments area, so please write and let me know what you thought. Boy, I wish I was that relaxed today.